Okay, we are open to last night's homework on page 429 and 430. Jack P, put your chair down, please. And why isn't your workbook out and open? I said it four times now. Okay, so here is page 429. So on page 429, we have number one, two, and nine. So for number one, they already gave us the common denominators we would need in order to subtract our fractions. Because if you remember, when we are um, adding or subtracting mixed numbers, we do the whole numbers last. So if we just focus on our two fractions, three-fifths and one-third. Jack P, put your chair down. Thank you. Three-fifths and one-third. The common denominator is 15, which they already gave to us. And Jack P, can you take a seat so the people around you can see, please? Thank you. So we would ask ourselves for the first one, going from three-fifths to something over 15, five times what equals 15? Three. Yeah, three. So then whatever we do to that denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So then we would take three times three. That would get us nine. So three-fifths would become nine-fifteenths. And then for one-third, we kind of do the same thing. Three times what equals 15? Five. So whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. So then one times five is five. So one third becomes five fifteenths. So let me ask ourselves, can we do the problem nine fifteenths minus five fifteenths? Yeah. yeah, we can. So nine fifteenths minus five fifteenths is four fifteenths. So we've done the fraction part. Then we come over and do our whole numbers. Four minus two, which gets us two. So we wind up with two and four fifteenths. Raise your hand if you got two and four fifteenths for number one. Two and four fifteenths for number one. Okay, hands down quickly. All right, so then we have number two. And number two is trickier because we know that five is larger than three and five six. However, we don't have a mixed number here. So that means that we need to turn five into a mixed number. So how we can do that? You know how we borrow from the whole number sometimes if we need to add some more to our fraction? You guys remember how we do that sometimes? We borrow from the whole number? If you take one out of the whole number, this five would become a four. And then you have this one, this whole number one. Well, we can turn the whole number one into a fraction. I want you to whisper to the person next to you, can a fraction be worth the whole number one? Turn and whisper, can it? How do you know if a fraction is worth the whole number one? Three, two, one, zero. All right, so fifth grade, who can raise your hand and tell me, how do you know when a fraction is worth the whole number one? How do you know, Frankie? Yes. Any exactly. Anytime your numerator and your denominator are the same, it's worth the whole number one. So if we borrow from the five, it becomes a four. Then that whole number one, we could turn into six six. Now can we take six six and subtract five six? Yeah. Six six minus five six equals one six. And on this five, remember we borrowed one from it, so it's now a four. So then we would take four minus three, and that would get us one for one and one six. How many of you got a little tripped up on number two? And that doesn't mean you didn't get the answer right, but how many of you got a little tripped up on number two? Mm -hmm. How many of you ended up getting one and one six for number two? How many of you ended up getting one and one six for number two? Okay, I think there are some people not raising their hands who should be because some of you I worked with and I know you got one and one six. All right. All right, go ahead and put your hands down. Then we had number nine. So for number nine, we needed to convert our own fractions. We needed to do it all ourselves. They didn't stack it or anything for us. So eight and one fourth minus seven eighths. For this one, we ignore our whole numbers. So we have one fourth and seven eighths. Now, our first step is always to make sure we find the what? The, the least common denominator. Exactly. So we have a 4 and an 8. So the smallest number that both 4 and 8 go into, the smallest multiple of them, would be 8. So we don't need to do anything to the 7 eighths because it already has 8 as a denominator. 
One fourth, however, we need to convert. So one fourth, we would convert to two eighths because we would need to multiply the denominator by two to get to eight. So we would have to multiply the numerator by two. So then we have two eighths minus seven eighths. Fifth grade, can we complete two eighths minus seven eighths? No. no. Because 2 eighths is smaller than 7 eighths. So then we would have to borrow from the eighths, the whole number. So we would take 1 away from the 8, it would become a 7. Then we would put that 1 in front of our 2 eighths. So we would have 1 and 2 eighths. Elena, I see you take a seat. So 1 and 2 eighths minus 7 eighths. So then when we had that one and two eighths, we would then need to convert it to an improper fraction. So one and two eighths, who can tell me what one and two eighths would become? Why don't you whisper to the person next to you? One and two eighths would become what as an improper fraction? Whisper. Three, two, one. Zero. All right, so fifth grade, one and two eighths. We would put a multiplication symbol between our denominator and our whole number, and then we would put an addition symbol between our whole number and our numerator. Eight times one is eight, plus two is 10. And we keep our denominator. So one and two eighths would become 10 eighths. So then we have 10 eighths minus 7 eighths, which gets us the 3 eighths. And remember, we borrowed from that 8, so it's now a 7. And there's no whole number to subtract from it. So it would just be 7 and 3 eighths. Will, what's your question? Um, so I did it like the difference. Okay, how'd you do it? I did, I did really just 8 and 3 eighths, and then I took 3 times. And then I made it, um, and then I made it just eight, and then I subtract five. And you got seven and three eighths? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, Elena, if you need to use the bathroom, go ahead. I, I'd like you to whisper to the person next to you how you felt about this first page. Whisper to the person next to you. How did you feel about this first page of homework? How did you feel? So, Senna, whisper to Drew, please. Jack L and Jack P, whisper to each other. All right, three, two, one, zero. All right, then we had page 430. So on page, 400, on page 430, we had number 12 and number 13. So for 12 and 13, they were word problems. And we were using this chart over here that describes the length and width of different bird egg sizes in inches. So for number 12, it said, how much longer is the Canada goose egg than the raven egg? Now, my book says one and two inches longer. If you had one and five tenths inches longer, that is correct, because five tenths is the same as one half. Nope. One and a half or one and five tenths works. Yep, so if you got two, then you, you made a silly mistake when you were subtracting. So what you should have done, so our Canada goose egg, you wanted to make sure you were looking at the length. If you got a completely different answer, you may have been looking at the width. It asks how much longer it is, so we look at the length. So we would take the Canada goose egg, and from that, we needed to subtract the length of the raven egg. So three and two fifths minus one and nine tenths. So we'd go through our steps, we'd find the least common denominator for the fraction. We'd ignore the whole numbers. So that would be the same as 2 fifths minus 9 tenths. Well, our LCD with a 5 and a 10 would be 10. So 2 fifths would become 4 tenths. And then we'd have 4 tenths minus 9 tenths, which can we do 4 tenths minus 9 tenths? No, because we can't take 4 and then subtract 9 from it. 
So then we would have borrowed from our three, the three would have become a two, and we would have had one and four tenths. Now, if we turn one and four tenths into a, an improper fraction, it would become 14 tenths. Can we take 14 tenths and subtract nine tenths from it? Yes, we can. 14 tenths minus nine tenths is five tenths. And then you would have, you'd have your two, and we do two minus one, and we get one and five tenths, or one and a half inches. Make sure you have inches because it's a word problem. Jack L. I got one and five tenths, but could I make that one and one and a half? Yep, you definitely. Exactly, you could. Well, Ah, uh, Richie, is that what you did too? Did you forget it was a two? Got it. So you just carry down the two. Okay. Jack P, did you already correct twelve and thirteen for yourself? Mm -hmm. All right, then go ahead. All right, Frankie, did you have a question? Uh, okay. And then thirteen. How much wider is the turtle dove egg than the robin egg? So we would look at the turtle dove egg with, because they're asking how much wider. So nine tenths minus the robin robin egg, which is three fifths. So nine tenths minus three fifths. Yep, three fifths to become six tenths. So we would have nine tenths minus six tenths equals three tenths inches. Make sure you have inches as your unit. Mackenzie. Yes. There you go. All right. I want you to whisper to the person next to you. How did you feel about 12 and 13? Whisper to the person next to you. How did you feel? Jack, how did you feel about 12 and 13? Good? All right. Put your head down. Close your eyes or put your head down. Except for Max. I want you to reflect on how you're feeling with mixed numbers, adding and subtracting them. Your eyes should be closed. You shouldn't be moving your mouth. That should be still be covering your nose and your chin. All right. Yep, go ahead, Chloe. I want you to reflect on how you're feeling about mixed numbers, adding and subtracting them. Eyes should be closed. I shouldn't be able to see your eyes. All right, show me on your hand, one through five. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I want you to be completely honest with me. One through five, how are you feeling? Hands down. Hands down. Hands up. Open your eyes. We are going to get ready for our notes. Open up to the next clean page in your notebook. Quickly, yes. So next clean page in your notebook. 